love Bondi. The sun, the surf, bright lights, the late nights, girls. I wouldn't leave anywhere else. Growing up, we had pet chickens, dogs, cats, pet cow, even a pet penguin. How was I not going to become a vet? I love being a vet in Bondi. You just never know what you're going to get. Some are shy, some are showy, but they're all characters. Hey, Barry, how you going? All right. Chris Can takes we... an emergency yeah. call. Whereabouts? OK, I'm about five minutes away. He's needed at the beach immediately. Excuse me, you wouldn't have uh, happened to spot a penguin on your walk around the rocks, would you? This one might find it. Yeah, well, that's what we're afraid of. <laughs> a sick penguin has been washed up on the rocks. Barry, from the rescue group Wise, needs to find it before urban predators pounce. There he is. This little fella is very weak and fighting to survive. Let's get a bit of a check over him and just see if we can work out what's going on now. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Nearby, Billy the Jack Russell is madly chasing his golf ball, despite a painful limp. His owner, Adam, is worried. Yeah, he's got a problem. Well, he was playing in a park with a dog and got bowled over and uh, had a limp after that and the limp just hasn't improved. Is that leg still sore? Now it's time to go to the vet and do what I've got to do. Just feeling around his, his, uh, his sternum there, along his keel bone. Now, penguins have a pretty good covering of fat, but he's, that sternum there is quite prominent. The malnourished fairy penguin has been found just in time. And aside from the stress that we're obviously putting him under just by looking at him, he, um, his system is under a bit of strain. I think the most likely thing that's happening at the moment is he's going through the process of molting. To do that, he requires a lot of energy. And if he hasn't put enough energy in, into his bank, which is his fat reserves, then he can't draw enough out during these periods to sustain him. And if he's lacking energy, he's going to come ashore and he just can't feed. And if he does that, he's in big trouble. Chris is now taking the penguin back to the clinic for further treatment. Adam has been waiting for Chris to examine Billy's back leg. The worried owner explains his little mate's golf ball fetish. That's unbelievable. Oh, he could, he could chase it for an hour or more. Yeah? Yeah. Doesn't always bring it back. I wouldn't mind getting him in the corridor out there and see him actually chase this ball. I want to see how that leg performs. Then I want to see if he actually limps as a result of that, because the thrill of the chase often overrides any pain. He loves it, doesn't he? He really does. Okay. If he's still limping through that, then it's a pretty serious injury he's got there. Right. X-rays quickly reveal how much trouble Billy's in. His hip joint has disintegrated. I know he's young. Mm -hmm. I know he's, he's managing OK, but what I'm recommending is, is something fairly drastic. Got surgery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we need to do is actually go in there and remove this area, remove this bone. And what happens there? There's nothing there. He can actually function without a hip joint. Really? Or not. Mm. He'll still walk on four legs. He'll actually walk better than he is now. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. What I'm proposing here is it's a decent operation. It's a big operation. It's going to hurt. But unfortunately, we, we don't really have another option. Oh, has to be done. Has to be done. Um, I can't leave him in pain like this. It's hard to sort of describe. Maybe in some ways I've got a bit more admiration or respect for him of just being able to get through all this without really showing any discomfort or problems, not wanting to be a burden on me. That's pretty amazing. It's a young dog with, with what looks like being a bright future ahead of it if we can get this operation done and if this operation is successful. It'll be OK. Well, that's 
this morning on my way to work at about 6.30 and got home tonight at about 7.30 and normally she's at the back door chomping at the bit to get, to get inside and um, found it a bit odd that she wasn't there. So I went around the back and I found her doing this. I wouldn't believe you'd actually need that muzzle. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Zena's owner is out of town, but his flatmate Gareth has rushed in with the trembling Rotty. She really is displaying the classical signs of a, of a snailbait poisoning and you do have to have to act pretty quickly on these guys because they, you can see their system just goes into overload. Come on, go. You just keep going there. They're being very good. And if it gets too far, they can actually go into seizures. When that happens, it's very bad news. You've had some problems with neighbours, you suspect, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and generally when, um, when she's kept outside and she might bark a bit, and I think they're a bit pissed and they try a bit of... I'm assuming the last time that she was poisoned. A phone hookup to the owner confirms the suspicion of poisoning. To me, it looks as though she's actually had something like a snail bait. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is give her an injection of, of something called atropine, which is going to hopefully reverse a lot of those effects. Yeah. That, that's all right with you? Yeah, yeah, all right, no worries, mate. This one's a pleasant injection. The, um, the next ones won't be so pleasant. I'm going to give this slowly. He administers atropine, an antidote. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually make her vomit. I want to get that stuff out of her stomach so she stops absorbing it, but I'm just trying to prevent her going into a seizure right now. This is a, what looks quite bizarre, but essentially it's a tablet that we're going to inject. Once this kicks in, she'll want to vomit. Now, that should be enough. I'll get this off. This is going to be a really tough moment for her because she's already feeling yeah. incredibly bad. Come on, go. Perfect, here we go. Come on, go. Yeah, it does stink, doesn't it? You're in charge of that. Type. Oh, great. <laughs> Lucky you. Can you pass me that tape as well? Zena's vomit is green. Chris now realises she's swallowed snail bait containing a deadly poison called meteldehyde. There's no antidote for that. It's a little bit funny that the guy who owns the dog is a cop and so is a housemate and so are all these guys here. Is this dog <laughs> being poisoned? The person that poisoned it doesn't know what he's messing with, does he? He's trouble. The intravenous route just... She just doesn't seem to be responding to that and that's probably a result of the poisoning itself. Mm -hmm. What I'm actually going to do here looks a little bit strange, but it works. There's a great blood supply to the eye and that gets absorbed pretty quickly. Yep. It's a bit of an irritant though, mm -hmm. so she won't like this. Paul, Zena's owner, is now racing back to Bondi to be by her side. Once you get to know her, she's the most beautiful, friendly, lovely natured dog. She's an absolute, she thinks she's human. She's a baby. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Yeah, mate. Hey, mate. What I'm proposing is that we, we take her over to the emergency centre for the simple fact she's going to probably need to be anaesthetised and also monitored throughout the night. Um, and she also needs something called a, a, a gastric lavage. Zena needs her stomach pumped urgently to purge the toxin from her system. I'm assuming she's actually been given a fair sized bait there. At the moment, it's, it's touch and go. The seriously ill Rottweiler now needs to be transferred to the clinic's emergency referral hospital, SASH. Zena is in a critical condition. Hey, you got Zena. Just to fill you in, with. she came in about an hour and a half ago, yeah. and she was tremoring and, and basically in a fair bit of distress. Mm -hmm. So just putting both tubes in. We're trying to fill up the stomach with warm water and then basically empty it out. So trying to physically remove all of the toxin from her stomach. The thing I'm most mindful of at the moment is the potential for brain damage. Uh, we saw Zena's temperature shoot through the roof to above 40 degrees. Now, if it goes over 41 or, heaven forbid, 42, then there's a very real risk of brain damage. The gastric tube has been removed and now the vets can only wait and hope. 
What we're looking for over the next few hours is basically a reduction in the amount of tremoring she has. We want her whole nervous system to calm down. The devastated owner finally arrives. We just say, no, we are doing everything we can. Paul is a Sydney policeman, and he's certain this has been an act of pure malice. If they've got a beef with me, they've got a beef with something. But to, to kill a dog, to, to try to kill a dog, which they would have done if, if we weren't home. So the next few hours pretty much decide Zena's future. If she can metabolise the toxin that's in her system, keep that temperature down and begin to show some significant signs of improvement, then the future looks good. If not, if she continues to tremor, if she goes into seizure, then it's bad news, it's very bad news. Certainly not losing that ability. Next morning, yeah. Chris checks on the malnourished fairy penguin. Is he dehydrated? He's a little bit, yeah. Mm. It's a bit indignant, really, the whole mm. crop needle, but it's the only one to do it. There we go, sweetheart. Paddy the penguin is weak, but he's putting up a fight. He's feisty. Chris is analysing a sample of Paddy's poo to find out just how much trouble this guy's in. Oh, hang on. We've got worms here. Jeez, there's so many. The, the simple fact is he's, he's not eating at the moment. He's under stress. And all these parasites in his gut are trying to eke out an existence as well and trying to suck out as much nutrition as they can. It's quite a chance there that he, he'd come out second best. It's 1.07 kilos. The zoo is coming to pick him up tomorrow. But in the meantime, we need to find a nice little spot to get his strength back. We're absolutely shockers out the back. There's so many dogs and cats out there that are just going to add to his stress. So I've organised some alternative accommodation. Do you mind if I have someone to stay tonight? No, that's fine. You sure? No, oh, mate, you don't, like, I don't know if you're taking a piss here, but of course you don't. You don't have to ask me. It's not even Chris has decided Paddy the sick penguin can crash at his place for the night but checks first with his somewhat confused housemate. No, not at all. It's a bird, so... That's fine. Boys? Just another day at the office. What have you, what have you got, mate? Penguin. <laughs> a little penguin for you. What, what sort of penguin is it? It's a little fairy penguin. So, um, Brown, when was the last time you bought a bird home? That's unnecessary. But so, uh, he's far less complicated than the rest of them, mate. Eh? <laughs> Pilchards are on the menu, but Chris needs something to help force feed Paddy. I'll be back in a second. Hello, how are you going? I've lived here for 10 years now, and there's always some strange animal here. A, a homeless dog or... A, Needy cat or something like that. Can I just grab some um, chopsticks? Just the wooden disposal one. Right? Uh, the penguin is about as strange as it's got recently. Got him. And yeah, they thought it was just a little bit strange, but never mind. We'll see if he takes it. Are you trying to kill it? That's my kill finger. It is <laughs> Paddy's not showing a lot of gratitude for his free dinner, but Chris persists. I mean, it looks very messy, and it is always going to be a struggle, but. Right now, he doesn't really realise that he's got to eat. Go on, down the hatch. That's it. You've almost got to make the decision for them. The plan now for Paddy is some much-needed rest. Come well, on, mate. Well, good night. There you go. How are you, Lisa? Good. How are you? Thank you. you must better. be happy. A lot better. A yeah, lot better come today. see her. Yeah. You'll be over the moon. At the emergency hospital, 
Zena has made it through the night. Oh, yeah, look at you wearing your tail. That tail's going. Uh, so she'll still be quite groggy yeah, today and even probably into tomorrow. Just it's been a close call. Zena could have suffered severe brain damage, but remarkably, she's OK. And she looks so normal now. Yeah. And to see her lying there last night broke my heart. And, um, but to see her again today, would complete turnaround. I can't describe it ecstatic. Relieved. <laughs> Don't feel camera shy now. Yeah, you always That's want to be the centre of attention. <laughs> Have I got a surprise for you? Yeah? I like the sound of that. These little flippers are powerful. I mean, even when I'm holding them there, they, they flick against me and, and you feel them. It's like he's trying to slap me. How's that? I like it, isn't it? He's rested up now. I'm pretty keen to see how he performs in water. Also, there's a chance he might actually feed a bit more comfortably in water as well. Never seen a beach like this before, have you? Immediately, he seems more at home. You put him in here, his eyes brighten up. He wiggles those little flippers like he, like he does. He has a shake, a bit of a preen. Thanks. Thanks. That was nice. What we're seeing right now is a very positive step in the right direction, but it's a very long road to recovery. It's not long. Not long, OK? Hey, Barry? Barry from Wires is ready to escort Paddy to the zoo. Hopefully, after a few weeks of rehabilitation, Paddy will be able to rejoin his mates out in Sydney Harbour. Hi, right, Paddy. It's been fun, mate. It's been real. Thank you. No worries. All, All the best. Time. See you, mate. You're having a big operation today, aren't you? Billy, the seven-month-old Jack Russell, is about to have major leg surgery. I didn't sleep very well last night, and I don't think Billy did either. And um, he's getting very affectionate at the moment. I think he's now senses there's something about to happen as well. It's not easy. Yeah, OK. So we've made our cut, we're now working our way down through the muscle layers. The hip joint is covered in a, in a decent layer of muscle, we're now going between those, pushing them aside so until we can actually ex expose the, the hip joint and we're going to go in there, get the top of the, the femur and basically lop it off. I guess the next step's the, uh, the money step because we've positioned our our chisel, essentially it's a chisel in there. You now get the hammer and then bang down and it takes the that head of the, the femur on one side and then leaves the rest of the femur remaining on the other side. So this is the uh, the bit that I guess fixes the problem. Yeah. Not sure this is the bit that Adam will particularly enjoy watching. It's effective. So this is the ball of his, of his femur. Now, that should have cartilage covering that the whole way around. It should be nice and smooth and really slight in that hip joint. You can see it's just been eaten away by this, this problem that he's had. So he's really better off not having that in his, in his body at all. That bone was just days away from collapsing. Billy has just been saved a lot of pain and permanent disability. Back at home, Zena is showing no signs of her snail bait ordeal. I'm ecstatic that she's here now. And it uh, looks like we'll be moving out soon. Um, I just can't take the risk that something like this is going to happen again. But I'm happy that, I'm so happy that she's here now. <laughs> How's our boy? Hey, Billy boy. How you going, matey? You're looking good. You're looking real good. Next morning, Billy has Breakfast made a great there. recovery from his major hip surgery. He's much more cheerful this morning. Yeah. I wouldn't expect he's going to try and use that leg too much today anyway. It's, it's very early days. Absolutely. Gee, the mouth's OK, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're around 18 hours since the operation, and um, from being a sooky thing yesterday, he's now a, uh, a sooky thing today. But he's going really well. He's, he's putting a little bit of weight on that leg, which is probably above and beyond where we thought he'd be. Go on, okay? <coughs> Going home pretty soon. Not long. Really looking forward to getting home. 
have a special treat for him, I think. Hey, what do you think? Hey, we're gonna go home? Sleep in your own bed tonight too, hey? It's been a good holiday for you, hasn't it? You've really regenerated. <laughs> Look at that. New clothes too. After two weeks at the Taronga Zoo Health Farm, Paddy's ready to be set free and he's got a new mate for company. Yeah, they've been getting on very well. They've become good friends in wildlife. You go there and make some more friends, all right? Okay, guys. See you, Paddy. Somewhere out there in Sydney Harbour, family members are waiting. And these two are impatient to start their journey. It's just so good to see him go and, and go so well. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.